I'm done. I'm, uh, my feet are completely soaked. My stupid trainers. My jeans are soaked. I'm cold. <laughs> I just want to go home and have a cup of tea. And then maybe a beer. I've got to get over there yet. Yeah. Hi guys, and welcome back to the beach. I've come down the beach this evening. I've got about an hour or so before, before sunset kicks in, and uh, the sun is going to set over that way. Behind me, you've already seen it. Yeah, the sun's going to set over that way. Um, so I'm not going to have that long down here, really. And at the moment, it's half past seven, and they reckon the sun's going to set at about half past eight. So, uh, I've come down here with my trainers on and I'm treading in puddles. I've come down, hang on, that's better. I've come down here with uh, a 35mm camera and a roll of Adox Silvermax 100, which I haven't used before, only testing, but I haven't sort of uh, took it on a journey as such or put it on the channel or what have you. But um, I'm going to be using the Adox 100 and another puddle, my chin on. Uh, 35mm chin on CS with a, just a cheap Hanamex 28mm lens on. So uh, that's what I'm going to be using. And I've got to walk right underneath those cliffs. So I reckon on the way back it's probably going to get dark. And it's quite perfect at the moment because there's hardly anyone down here. It's um, where I live on the Isle of Wight at the moment. It's tourist season and, and they're all coming over. and. Uh, at the moment they're probably in their hotel rooms getting dressed and ready to go out which means the beach is nice and empty this time so it's like my back garden again so i'm going to venture off right down towards those cliffs at the end and the tide's right out there's no one on the beach so i should be able to get some decent photographs and i'm not too fussed with with um you know trying to make the perfect photograph etc etc i want to shoot this film and see what it's like i've got i bought some um the developer for it as well which is uh Adox's HR developer and I've already had a little tiny double with that and whether it complements the Adox 100 um I was a massive pull on the floor uh, whether it complements the Adox 100 that well I don't know because I haven't tried it in any other films or I haven't tried Adox in any other developer but um that's the formula I'm going to be using is the Adox 100 film Silvermax and the HR developer as well. So uh, we're going to crack on. I've got about, I don't know, 30 shots or so inside the camera. So I'll see how I'll get on, whether I cut the film, whether I take a few shots and cut the film out of the camera later on, or whether I'll get excited and just shoot the shit out of the whole roll. I don't know. It's up to me, really. It's what, it's what I want to do. But uh, at the moment, it's looking really nice. I've also bought out my chopping board as well. I don't know if you guys saw a video, uh, probably a few months that I did, where I bought out this ice icon to the beach and I wanted to get low shots. So I made a stabilization base out of an old wooden chopping board, kitchen chopping board, and uh, a Lastolite bag. So I've made a bean bag out of an old Lastolite bag. I don't, if you guys have been following me for a while now, you know that I don't like spending money out when I don't have to. I try, try and make stuff. Um, Apart from a pinhole camera, I haven't got around to that one yet. I used to, um, I used to do quite a lot of seascape photography years ago on digital, and uh, I really did get into it. And quite a few times a week in the summer and in the winter, all times of year really, I'd be out shooting seascapes, and I really found it shooting sea, seascapes really tranquil. You know, you'd be on your own at a beach and you see some of the most amazing, beautiful sunsets. Um, and you turn around and you're on your own and you're just sitting there listening to the waves and watching the sun go down. It is really quite nice. Man, I must get fit. I'm out of breath already. I don't know how these photographers do these hikes. They must like train for ages or something. <laughs> so I've just seen, I'm gonna start um, taking a few shots before I get over to the rocks I've got. There's the chopping board talking about and the Elastolite bag 
that I've got um, uh, uh, chickpeas inside. There's my stable base for the floor. That bag can go back in there. And uh, there's my Chinon CS as well. And I'm gonna be using the uh, Chinon's light meter inside, the little indicator uh, needle inside for my meter. And I'm just gonna put it halfway and take the shot. I'm gonna keep this really simple. I've also got a cable release if I need it, but I don't think my shutters are gonna go that slow just yet. So let's set this up and get a couple of shots. I better hurry up because there's a family with dogs coming behind and they'll start putting paw prints in the ground. So it looks about 160th of a second. F11. 130th of a second F11. But just slightly overexposed, which would be handy. So Okay, here we go. First shot. I'll try and get a bit closer to the sea. Just as the water starts coming up. Here it comes. Second shot. Done. Here come the dogs. That was lucky. There's a greyhound, look. So this is the next scene that I've stopped taking, you see. I'm getting closer to the cliff now, but I've come across this nice, I'll turn the camera around, this nice little water pool here, and uh, some rocks. I've also got all this lovely um, sandy looking juni stuff going on. You can see I've got the chin on CS sitting on the chopping board, ready to go. So take a picture of that scene there. Let's bring the GoPro down for you to see what I'm doing. Let's take the beanbag away. Get real low, there you go. Shot taken. So hopefully that was a, another decent shot. Only took one there. It's funny, isn't it? With digital, it probably took a whole series, but um, <laughs> they would all look the same. Just put my backpack on. So, uh, that's better. I forgot my belt, my jeans are falling down as well. Lovely jubbly. So let's carry on moving towards those cliffs and uh, I've still got light on my side so that's good if I get 10 decent photographs I'm happy but I'm aiming to shoot the whole roll once I get down towards the rocks uh, a lot of handheld stuff and see see what we get I've made it I'm down near the rocks and uh, it's very quiet. There's only one person coming down with his dog at Big Arse House Station, but I can't imagine they're going to go past me. I'm going to start off just take a photograph of these uh, lovely chalk cliffs here. And this place is called uh, Culver Cliff on the Isle of Wight. It's got a few sad stories behind it, but we won't go into that. Um, but this is, yeah, Culver Cliff on the Isle of Wight. And you can see this big ass cliff for miles around and you can see the sun's just uh, starting to drift off in the background there which is great I'll be able to get some uh, maybe a few little tiny semi long exposures but uh, yeah I'm going to start off getting a couple of photographs of these cliffs here so I just need to get something in the foreground over here's loads of uh, white chalky rocks, but this is also very slip, very slippery. But um, stupid to wear tra <laughs> trainers and so like this. Nice, a bit of driftwood over there. Actually, I might get a photograph over here. It looks quite nice. I'll get my camera back over in a minute, but there's a load of. Uh, This one will do. I need some good wellies. This is not 
Ah, shit. Uh, oh, bugger. This is heavy. <laughs> no. I'm stuck. <laughs> I've got a rock. So I've just put in here for a little bit and I've got these nice low shots, the uh, clouds are looking nice. There's sometimes moments like this I wish I was shooting colour, um, but I'm not, so it has to do, wasn't it? But uh, I just went over there and slipped everywhere and I found this nice big chalky looking rock. So I'm just going to throw this in on the sand and just use it as uh, a bit of foreground material, see what happens, eh? And I just did some light readings and uh, one second F16 for a slightly long exposure. Let's see how Adox Silver Max works with that. One second. Here comes another one at one second. Waiting for the wave just to kiss the rock. Here it comes. Here it comes again. It's another one. And one more, just as it goes back, the water goes back past the rock instead of going forward. Get it? Now. Okay. Well, here's a better one. We'll have that one again as it goes back. And all those little bubbles should streak, uh, hopefully. Right, let's move on. I'm soaking wet now. So I'm going to put this boulder back where it come from. I don't exactly know where it come from, but it's over there somewhere. Just got to watch out for this slimy seaweed stuff. This shit will have you slipping over and breaking your angle before you know it. Not the ideal footwear to use. Talk about come well prepared. Here we go. Oh, nearly, nearly, nearly. That'll do. Goodbye. I nearly went arse over. Oh dear. We'll go back to 16, one second on these rocks. Hopefully I can uh, balance it. Infinite focus. There you go. A bit wonky. Ah, that looks good. Right, one second, F16. Look at that. Hopefully that'll come out. <laughs> oh dear coming down onto these slimy rocks and just nothing but a pair of trainers is um is not recommended at all i tell you uh i used to have merrills when i used to come down here shooting but i couldn't find them and i've got a pair of, of, of merrills which are really rugged but um i couldn't find them so i just put my trainers on never mind all right I'm done with the photographs now and uh, I'm going to get back and show that HR developer. Hopefully I've got some nice photographs, there's nothing worse than coming out and going back with nothing but at least if I've got, you know, a few, um, I can live and learn from it, maybe print one, maybe frame one, I don't know. Let's get back and uh, see what we've got in the development. So I'm back from the beach and back in my darkroom and I've already developed the film. I did that off camera and this is the developer that I used. It's uh, Adox HR Dev and it's got instructions on the front here for two particular films. One of them is the Silver Max that I was using and the other one is Adox HR 50. And it's quite simple on the bottle. It gives you the instructions for both films on how to develop them. And for the Silver Max, it says um, one part to 30 parts and 15 minutes at 20 Celsius. So you can't go wrong. It says it on the box. So that's exactly what I did. And this is the 
can that the uh, Adox Silver Max comes in. And I'm quite impressed because it's got this little tiny twist here. I was trying to figure out how to open it and then I realized you just twist it, pull it off and pull the film out. How ingenious is that? Um, you know, say you're sitting there trying to break a can open with, with a bottle opener um, that I often use because I haven't got one of those special film extraction thingamajigs. I like that word, thingamajig. People comment on that. It's a thingamajig. If you don't know what it is, it's a thingamajig. But I usually, I can't even get it back on now, but anyway. Um, and that's another Silvermax film that I'm going to be shooting at some point to uh, play around with. So that first one was just a bit of an experiment, really. And the negatives haven't come out that bad at all. Some of them are a little bit overexposed. Um, but I'd rather them be overexposed and underexposed because that'd be a nightmare in a darkroom to try and make a print out of. So... Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's the, there's the chemicals there. Can you see? Yep, there they are. That's the little tiny bottle. It's only a small bottle. It's only 100 mil, but um, I'm liking, I'm liking it to Rodno. It's, it's kind of like very concentrated, so you only use a small amount. Um, when I go shooting this next, I might put this, um, I might try Rodno with this and see what happens, um, or maybe Xtol will see what happens as well. But it does recommend that you use this developer for this film. I think there's another developer you can use with it, but it says on the front, Adox Silvermax. So it tells me I'm using the right developer. But my negatives seem to come out slightly overexposed, um, some of them anyway. Uh, and like I said, I don't mind that. I'd rather that than, than be underexposed. And uh, then, I've, then I'm gonna have trouble in the dark room trying, trying to uh, make a print out of them. But uh, I'll just quickly show you the legs on the light box, what I've come back with. Um, I've cut them into pieces, actually. So this was the uh, stone that I threw. You can see there. And uh, it's real dense. Totally um, <laughs> overexposed. I did that for one second. Um, maybe it could have done with just half a second. But it's still workable. Um, so I can work on that one. So that's the uh, that was the stones. And they look a much better. Better negative there, the two on the left side, they was, um, well I've got the camera really low down on the chopping board, them two of the cliff. Uh, that one there was the, the third one, I've turned it round so you can see. That was the cliff face there. And a couple more looking out towards uh, the sea, um, longer exposures, again one second and uh, you can see dense and again totally overexposed. So they're pretty, they're workable but not ideal. And again, um, a couple there, quite nice on the right hand side of the cliff. Uh, the others are just trees that I shot um, before I went down the beach. But let's look at these ones. So you can just see the cliff in the background and where my thumb is, you can see the wave. So that's another one I'd like to work on as well. Uh, they look quite good. They're quite, it's quite curly. But, um, there's three more that I did on the rocks. That was the one that you saw me taking the photograph of there. This one here, I did these ones off camera. But this one here you saw me taking the photograph of, uh, which looks quite nice as well. A little bit dense in the sky, but we've got some nice detail in the rocks. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes out. And while I'm at it, I'll just quickly show you the um, the chemicals that I'm going to use for developing the uh, print, which is Ilford Multigrade Developer. It's pretty much new, that one. Uh, stop bath. I use this cheap and cheerful stop bath from Champion. Um, does me fine. And also the fixer as well. I use a cheap and cheerful fixer. And again, it does. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it uh, uh, giving me any bad negs or any bad prints. But uh, again, Champion Fixer is what I use. Um, I use these for uh, my films. And at the moment, I'm going to be using this Ilford Multigrade for the print. So uh, these are the chemicals that I'm going to use. I've already mixed them up, so I've just got to put them in my trays and uh, get on with making the print. So I'm just going to make one print for this video and show you guys a uh, little process that I do. That's inside the carrier. And this is the print where I've really low down. Um, I put this one on Instagram as well. Um, so we'll start off working with this print here. Okay, it's inside the carrier. Just blow excess dust off, stick it in the enlarger. Get it framed up, get some composition going. See what we do. So I've just composed my image onto the paper. It's set slightly inside the 10 by eight. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about is the horizon. I wasn't exactly dead straight when I took the photograph. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of moving around a little bit to try and get that straight. Looks about straight. Just do a quick focus check. I'm placing a piece of uh, 
plain paper down, the same as what I'm going to be using, same uh, thickness, just so I get a good focus and find that grain. There's the grain, and one last check on my other focus finder. That's good, nice and sharp. Ready to do a test strip. Now, because I've seen the negative and it looks overexposed, um, I'm going to just throw, instead of doing normal test strips of five seconds and whatever, I'm just going to throw one strip across it and just hit light on it for one minute just to see where I stand. It's going to go diagonal across so I can get the sea and the sky in. All right, so just hit it for one minute. It's done, in it goes. And of course, there's other ways that I could do test strips. The f-stop method, or the normal uh, test machine method that I do, but by doing this, putting it across the sky and the land, it's going to hopefully tell me where one minute stands, and I can work on it from there. Some people might say it's a waste of paper, but sometimes I do it like this. So I've just done the, uh, two test strips now. I've done the first one at one minute, which granted is quite dark. So, uh, but the sky is, I mean, all this stuff, so the cliff and the, and the sand is way too dark, but the sky at one minute is too dark. But I'm gonna have a hunch at 45 seconds on that. I did a second test strip at 30 seconds. The cliff looks quite nice. I've got some nice uh, tones going on in there. It's a nice uh, contrasty scene is what I'm after. And uh, the sky is a little bit too light for what I want. So maybe 45 seconds on the sky will be okay. But the sand part down here, it just looks a bit too too muddy. I'm not gonna go into using contrast filters. I wanna try and make a nice print without using contrast filters, just using some dodging and burning. So uh, I'm not gonna make any more test strips. I'm gonna whack a piece of 10 by eight on there. Um, and I'm gonna hit it for 30 seconds, but this area is only is gonna get uh, an extra 15 seconds, the sky. But during that 30 seconds, I'm just gonna dodge areas here, just to try and lighten some of these, get some highlights going on around this area. So uh, let's see what, see what happens. Just seeing what happens if I uh, go with my gut instincts on a little bit of dodging and burning, using those two test strips that I've already made at one minute and 30, uh, one minute and any other one at 30 seconds. So lock that in there. Okay, 30 seconds. Uh, I'm just gonna use the little dodge tool just around some of these areas. Where I can see is the darkest spots. Don't matter what shape it is, just try and get some highlights going. And a little bit on the cliff. I'm going to be hitting that again at the top. Okay, and then 45 seconds for the cliff area. I'm just going to use this card, hopefully. Uh, 15 seconds, we said. Make the 45 seconds up for the sky. And a little bit on the cliff. I don't want to get that too dark. And the last thing to do, I'm just going to vignette the sky a little tiny bit using this. Hopefully I can turn the light on. Just burning that sky in a little bit more, just a vignette, and also now down at the bottom of the uh, print as well. And it goes. So that's going to be one minute in there. Let me timer on. A bit too much on that left side of the cliff, I think. The sky is looking okay. Into the stop. And 
finally into the fix. Give that a minute in there, we'll see what it looks like. Look, I've just squeezed it off and uh, hanging out to dry now. So yeah, it looks okay. I could just do with this side of the cliff. It's just too dark here. So that 45 uh, seconds for the sky has um, also killed the cliff as well. And I didn't want that. So I'm gonna have to make another one, but this time, as well as dodging this area, try and dodge this area of the cliff as well, just so we can get some um, tonality back in that, because that's just gone too dark. So this is the second print that I've done. So uh, you can see I've now just, all I did was use my finger, just to just use my finger like this during the first 30 seconds, as, as well as using the dodge tool as well around these areas. Um, and then I also use the dodge tool a little tiny bit on the, on the water here. But you know, the print still looks rather muddy to me. Um, the top of the cliff here is, is, has gone dark. I do know that this, this cliff is, um, is, is a sandy color. Um, so there's not much tones going on in it anyway but uh it's a lot better than the last one so i've managed to keep some tones going on but do you know what i'm going to try the contrast filters just to see if i can make this pop a little bit um just the water just looks a bit too muddy really uh, i'd like that to be a little bit lighter and these areas try and get some highlights going on so i just went away and uh, used some contrast filters and this one i used a zero contrast filter on and also number five I split graded it I did 30 seconds on zero and 30 seconds on contrast five now bear in mind that contrast five is going to pull the blacks out um, what I did I used my finger during the contrast five 30 seconds uh, for probably about 20 seconds of that over this part of the cliff uh, just to try and get a little bit more detail in it and I've managed to do that but uh, I've lost the sky so <laughs> so <laughs> So, uh, you know, I'd like to have seen a bit more detail in the sky in this area. So um, I think I'm going to use the contrast filters and uh, do the same again, but this time try and get some of the sky in um, just to give it a little bit more, a more depth in the image. So um, off we go again. So you can see I've got my contrast filters here. Um, this is zero and this is contrast five. So I'm going to do 30 seconds with zero which is not going to do much to the blacks. It's just going to hold the highlights back for me, or uh, uh, keep the highlights, sorry, and hold the blacks back. And then I'm going to use five to build on the blacks. So uh, let's put zero in first. And of course, when I use five, holding back the blacks, I need to dodge the uh, top of that cliff. So um, zero is in the carrier. There it is there. I'm just going to just go mine larger. Okay, so this is the last one I'm going to do. I'm not going to keep wasting paper on one particular print. It's, uh, it's all playing in the dark room and testing and having fun. That's what it's about. So, right, in goes the paper. Close the hatch. And uh, 30 seconds with that contrast zero. So that's just going to work on that for 30 seconds and it's going to... Um, hold the blacks back but work on the lighter tones just a little tiny bit on the cliff just dodging that cliff a little tiny bit so that's where I was getting my problems okay in goes the zero five uh, in goes the contrast five filter Uh, it's 30 seconds, but I need to just use my finger to cover a lot of that cliff. So for about 25 seconds, and just keep waving it around. And a little bit of that water. Okay, that should be enough. And now I need to burn the sky in. I'm going to take all the filters out to do this and I might just hit the top of the cliff, but I could cut a template out using one of the other prints, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to use my hand and just try and dodge some of that sky in. And this is the last one, so I'm not going to waste any more paper on it. 
hopefully I'll take away from this a learning curve a little feel for what that adox film is like and a video for you guys to see some techniques if you haven't seen them before actually that's not looking too bad I've managed to get the sky back right let's uh, stop and fix it see what we've got and that's the final one using the contrast filters I could have gone a little tiny bit more on the uh, contrast 5 I feel I could have made it a little bit blacker but um, it's still quite a difficult tricky print to do so uh, I'll just go through them with you so this was the contrast filter one the last one I did and this was the first contrast filter one I did where just didn't get enough in the skies second print that I did without contrast filter was just dodging and burning quite muddy quite dark not over impressed with that one to be honest with you and this was the very first one that I did there <laughs> and although I said that's the last one do you know what it really bugged me so I just did one more and I'm glad I did because I've managed to get something closer to what I was looking for and there it is so uh, this one's still split grading um, contrast zero contrast five um, but I let the contrast five filter build up a bit more around this area and also I used a dodge tool just to um, when I was using the contrast five filter I just uh, used a uh, I'll show you this dodge tool here and I just covered this area so I wanted to get this the, the sea a little tiny bit lighter than, than the rest of the image here just this this puddle part whatever you call it and um, and again I still dodged the cliff uh, you know I managed to burn a little tiny bit over the top but who cares um, I know I've spent quite a bit of time doing this and I'm quite happy with the result I've got the only downside is I've got a couple of little tiny spots but I'll just finish up now so I'm just gonna start tidying my dark room up but um, I'll just uh, talk to you while I'm doing so so yeah these are the um, contrast filters that I was using Ilford's multi-grade filters um, quite accessible online to buy I think you can buy them in half sets or full sets the half sets are obviously cheaper um, so these are the multi-grade filters I was using that's uh, where's the print so that was the final print that I came out with and uh, I'm quite happy with that that one I'm gonna let dry and uh, I've already put um, these on Instagram actually if you go on my Instagram feed you'll see one of them I'll leave that to dry now and I did a couple more prints as well playing around with them images that was uh, that was the one on the rocks you can see there let's pull it back into the light a bit more but the clouds in the sky uh, wasn't that great so I did another one and pulled the clouds in okay not perfect this was just dodging and burning there was no contrast filters used on on these ones um, and I started playing around with the one of the pebbles but uh, I wasn't it was so overexposed I had to I had to uh, I think it was a couple of minutes on the enlarger and I find that the longer you burn a print on the enlarger the grainier the image gets and I've got quite a bit of grain in there so you can see it so I wasn't too over impressed with that but still nice nice picture but yeah the adox film I've still got another roll to use and maybe not a seascape maybe something like uh, maybe some street photography on it or something um, but I also wouldn't mind trying it where I've got a bit more a bit more contrasty detail you know on a, on a sunny day or something and see what I get from that but um, I've got one more roll to use and I've still got quite a bit of that developer yet left so um, maybe I should uh, maybe I might get another roll after that and see how I'd get on but um, to be honest with you I, I try all these different films and I my usual choice of film is going to be fp4 hp5 
or uh, Tri-X or T-Max. I like those films. I certainly like the uh, Tri-X 400 and I like the HP 5 as well. They're, they're my sort of normal um, films that I go for. So when I try out different films, sometimes people send me films, it's great and I can use them. Or sometimes I feel like buying a, a different film and trying it out. I can never, I can actually never see any difference. Um, you know, much, much difference between what I'm used to shooting. But uh, yeah, it's also fun to try these things out, I suppose. If you, if you don't, if you don't try out new films and new developers, you'll never know what you're you know what kind of where you are and and um what you like doing but uh so far i quite like the t-max it's given me a decent result from what i can see it was a little bit overexposed down the beach not the ideal conditions but like i said i like to try it in some sunny conditions or some contrasty conditions maybe some street photography uh, maybe some portraits who knows so i've got another roll left to use here and i've got some hr dev as well left that um i'm going to keep and try it again sometime so uh, anyway guys hope you like the video um thanks very much as usual to all the subscribers uh, also my patrons as well without you guys i won't be able to uh, play around as much as i do in the dark room so i do really appreciate your support on patreon as well so uh, thanks very much and i'll catch you next time If you like this video please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one.